So far, all the transformers we have seen have had two coils, a primary coil and a secondary coil. But there are transformers that have only a single coil, and they are called auto transformers. The auto in the name does not refer to automatic, rather it refers to single or one. Auto transformers can still be thought of as having a primary and a secondary side. Just like double wound transformers, the coil is made out of copper wire wrapped around a ferromagnetic core to help concentrate the magnetic field created by the alternating current. Let's take a look at how they work. Let's say we apply a primary voltage of 100 volts across the entire coil. The voltage at the bottom of the coil will be 0 volts, and the voltage at the top of the coil 100 volts. If we then connect a load or tap the coil halfway along its length, what secondary voltage will be present across this load between this point and the bottom of the coil? Well, the number of turns in this virtual secondary coil is half the number of turns of the whole or primary coil. We know from the transformer equation that the ratio of turns is equal to the ratio of the voltages. Therefore, the secondary voltage will be half the primary voltage, or 50 volts. We can think of this in terms of the voltage per turn. Let's assume that there are 100 turns in this coil. Therefore, there will be 1 volt per turn. If we tap at the 50th turn, the combined voltage at this point will be 50 times the voltage per turn, or 50 times 1 volt, which is equal to 50 volts. Have a look at this case. Let's say we have a coil with 250 turns, and we apply a primary voltage of 220 volts between the bottom of the coil and turn 100. What will the voltage be if we tap the top of the coil at turn 250? In this case, we can say that the primary turns is 100 and the secondary turns is 250. Using the transformer equation, we can calculate that the voltage will be 550 volts. Therefore, just like normal dual wound transformers, auto transformers can either step down or step up the voltage. In reality, auto transformers have multiple taps so that a specific secondary voltage can be selected. Let's assume we have taps at 30%, 50%, 70%, 90%, 100%, and 110%. If the primary voltage is 380 volts, this means that we could get 144 volts, 190 volts, 226 volts, 342 volts, 380 volts, or 418 volts. Theoretically, we could also get secondary voltages like 82 volts by connecting between the different tap points. Let's take a look at the currents flowing through the primary and secondary circuits of an auto transformer. This is best done with an example. Here we have a step down auto transformer with a tap at 45%. Let's apply a primary or supply voltage to the coil of 380 volts. We can then work out what the secondary voltage across the load will be. We know from the transformer equation that the ratio of the secondary to the primary turns is equal to the ratio of the secondary to the primary voltage. In this case, we have been given the ratio of the secondary to the primary turns as a percentage, 45%. Therefore, we know that 45% is equal to the secondary voltage divided by the primary voltage, which in this case is 380 volts. 
we can rearrange this equation to find that the secondary voltage is equal to 0 0.45 multiplied by 380 volts, 0 0.45 simply being another way that we can write 45%. And therefore we can calculate that the secondary voltage is equal to 171 volts. Now, let's say that the load on the secondary side is rated at 100 VA. But what is VA? Well, time for a quick detour. The units of volt amperes are the units for measuring apparent power. Apparent power is the combination of active or real power, the power dissipated by resistive components of a circuit, the power measured in watts, which does useful work, and the reactive power, or the power dissipated by inductive and capacitive components of a circuit measured in volt amperes reactives that most often does not do any useful work in a circuit. We will look at power in more detail in a later video in this unit. Let's get back to our example. In this example we need to use VA because we have no idea of what the load in the secondary circuit is, or what resistive, inductive, or capacitive components are in the load. All we know is that the total power, the apparent power, is 100 VA. Let's calculate the currents through the primary and secondary circuits. Well, we know that the total or apparent power is 100 VA, and that this is equal to the secondary voltage multiplied by the secondary current. We know what the secondary voltage is. It's 171 volts. Therefore, we can rearrange the equation to find that the secondary current is equal to 100 VA divided by 171 volts. And therefore, that the secondary current is equal to 0 0.58479 amps which we can approximate to 0 0.58 amps. In an ideal transformer, we know that the power on the primary side is equal to the power on the secondary side. Therefore, we can write that the current on the primary side is equal to the total power on the secondary side, or 100 VA, divided by the primary voltage, which in this case is 380 volts and therefore calculate that the primary current is 0 0.26315 amps, which we can approximate to 0 0.26 amps. Let's do one more example. An auto transformer is required to step up a voltage from 220 volts to 250 volts. The total number of coil turns on the transformer winding is 2000 and we're asked to determine the position of the primary tapping point and the primary and secondary currents when the output is rated at 10 kVA or 10,000 VA. Before we start, let's draw a quick diagram and note what information we have been given and what we want to find out. We know that the primary voltage is 220 volts. We know that this is stepped up to a secondary voltage of 250 volts. The total number of coil turns on the transformer winding is 2000. We can therefore assume that the number of secondary turns is 2000. We are asked to find the primary current and the secondary current if the output is rated at 10 kVA. Let's have a look at part A first, the position of the primary tapping point. From the transformer equation, we know that the ratio of the secondary turns to the primary turns is equal to the ratio of the secondary voltage to the primary voltage. We can turn this equation upside down and say that the ratio of the primary to the secondary turns is the same as the ratio of the primary to the secondary voltage. We can rearrange this equation as follows. This gives us an equation 
for the number of turns on the primary coil. We know what the primary voltage is, we know what the secondary voltage is, and we know what the number of turns on the secondary coil are. Therefore, we can calculate that the number of turns on the primary coil, or the primary tapping point, will be 1760. Let's have a look now at part B. We know that the output is rated at 10 kVA, and we're asked to find the primary and the secondary currents. Let's start with the secondary currents. We know VA is equal to secondary voltage multiplied by secondary current. We can rearrange this equation as follows. Therefore, we can find that the secondary current is equal to 10 kVA or 10,000 VA divided by 250 volts. So the secondary current is equal to 40 amps. In an ideal transformer, the power on the primary is equal to the power on the secondary. Therefore, voltage primary times current primary is equal to voltage secondary times current secondary. We can rearrange this equation to find that the primary current is equal to the total power on the secondary side divided by the primary voltage. We know that the total power on the secondary side is 10 kVA or 10,000 VA and that the primary voltage is 220 volts. Therefore, we can calculate the primary current as 45.45454 amps, which we can approximate to 45.45 amps. Auto transformers have certain advantages over conventional double wound transformers. Because there is only a single coil, they tend to be smaller in size and less costly to produce compared to double wound transformers of the same rating. Also, they tend to be more efficient. Because there is only a single piece of copper, less energy is lost due to resistance and reactance. This means that they also give better voltage regulation than an equivalent double wound transformer. However, they also tend to have some disadvantages. The main disadvantage is that the secondary and primary circuits are not electrically isolated. This can cause several issues. Especially in the step down case, any break or open circuit in the secondary winding means that the full primary voltage is applied to the secondary circuit, and this can damage the secondary circuit. Also, if the secondary circuit suffers a short circuit condition, the resulting primary current is much larger than an equivalent double wound transformer due to the increased flux linkage. And this could damage the transformer. A lack of electrical isolation also means that the neutral connection is common. Therefore, earthing of a secondary winding automatically earths the primary winding and vice versa. There is no isolation from earth. Auto transformers are well suited to voltage regulation in distribution systems. To starting induction and synchronous motors and to transforming other voltages where the primary to secondary ratio is close to one, for example, in radio equipment.